back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do a book review and the book that I am going to be reviewing is the fourth and final one in the Moonside Quartet by David Hare. This is Ascendance Bright and I have been so excited about this series. You guys know I have been raving about all three of the books before this and I'm gonna do the same in this one because it is the final one in the quartet and it was fabulous. I absolutely loved it. I just could not get enough of the series. Honestly, I read through it super, super quick. I was actually buddy reading this with Michael and I basically just steamrolled ahead of him. So sorry, Michael, but I basically steamrolled ahead of him and just read most of it in two days because it was so good and it gripped me so much and I just adored it. It's a fantastic series set in this world where you have a moon tide for two years in every 12 and the moon tide basically is the time where the tides go down, this very tumultuous sea that divides two continents lowers and a bridge rises so that the two continents are joined. During this time there is a lot of political upheaval, strife, problematic politics going on and all sorts. We have different wizards in this world, we have different levels of wizardry as well. You can be a really strong, powerful, pure blood mage or you can be quite a weak, lower blood mage. So it goes from pure blood to half blood to quarter blood to eighth blood to sixteenth blood, I think. That's how it works. And then if you have any lower than that, then you're not a mage and you can't can't do magic. We also have a really interesting blend of Eastern and Western culture in this. We actually have influences from both sides because the writer is a New Zealand author, which means that he obviously has more interest in both sides of the world, which is really cool. And I think that definitely is reflected within this. It's a really fun, really easy series for anyone who wants to get into epic fantasy. I do feel like you could pick this up and read it and not have a problem because all of the characters, although there are quite a lot, are easily distinguished and we definitely get some really great moments, some really great progression of characters as we go through the books, particularly the first book, second book and fourth book are action focused. The third book is really character driven. This book in particular had a lot going on. The first three books are all building up to this big moment, this big epic conclusion to the series, and we have been following a couple of characters who have been chasing after the Cytale of Corinthius. The Cytale of Corinthius is basically a very, very valuable object in this world, and we don't know an awful lot about how it works, no one really understands it, but we do know that it can make people into mages, and that is a very desirable quality in this world, because mage blood and mages generally are quite hard to come by. There aren't that many of them. Even though a lot of people are mages, there aren't that many pure bloods anymore, and this thing will make pure blood mages and make them ascendants which is even more powerful than a pure blood mage it's like an ultra pure blood mage so it's pretty desirable and someone has stolen it and in the first book we find out who that is and we find out who then takes it off of them and from that point onwards it's just a crazy epic struggle between all sorts of different people to try and get this back to try and use it to try and convince other people that they should have it we also have a ton of absolutely incredible different races within this. We have reptile-like creatures. We have different sort of shape changes. We have all sorts of really cool stuff going on with the worlds and I absolutely loved it. And in terms of the pacing and the writing, I just whizzed through these books. They are really long, but they do not take me long to read because I just adore the writing that David Hare has. And I'm so glad that this is not the final one he's writing in this world. He's actually doing a new series set within this world, which I'm very excited for. I think that's called the Sun Surge series or something. And it's set a couple of years after the ending of this book. The ending of this book I felt was really satisfactory actually. We do have a few things that are not completely wrapped up but I'm guessing that he's going to bring a few of those strings into the next series as it is set a couple years later and I think that that will be really good. I think he's left himself space to go back to this world which I really enjoy. I also feel as though we have a lot of great stuff that is wrapped up in the end of this. We have some really good character moments in this book. We have some deaths in this book which are quite sad and we have some moments that are really really good, really happy. 
but we just have chaos. There's a lot of battle focus within this book. There's a lot of different armies, a lot of different people controlling those armies, and you have to keep track of those names, which if you haven't read an awful lot of epic fantasy might be confusing, but seeing as this is the fourth one in the series, you will by this point know everyone's names and know who they are, so it should be totally fine for you. It was fine for me. I'm not usually a huge battle fan. I do think that they are usually overdone and drawn out too long, but I think what we have in this series is we have a lot of characters who you can focus on within that battle and you are rooting for those characters. There are definitely characters that I have emotionally connected with within this series who I am constantly rooting for, constantly wanting to win and be good and be happy and not get into a horrible disaster like they always seem to. This story really did emotionally connect with me and I really, really love that and I think it's just an utterly fantastic book. Of all of the characters, my favourite one is Ramita, although I love a lot of them in this series and I find a lot of them fascinating, but I do think Ramita has been my favourite character throughout the whole series. I really love Eleanor as a character and and Portia and Sarah and there's lots of characters that I really find fascinating. I don't love them but I find them fascinating and that's like Gervon Guile and other people like that. There are some really manipulative horrible people within this world, Gervon Guile, and others who are just really funny and really entertaining. I like Ramon. Ramon is basically like a comedic relief character but he actually plays a really vital role in changing things up in this world and destroying certain elements of the world which is really fascinating. Generally just so many good moments within this though, like so many epic big twists, turns, moments I wasn't expecting, moments I was really excited about and it just was an excellent conclusion to the series. I don't finish a lot of series, that sounds bad, um, not because I don't want to but because I have so many ongoing series but this series was a priority for me from book one and I definitely wanted to read one after the other after the other and Many of you guys will know that Robin Hobb is my favourite author. David Hare hasn't replaced her as my favourite author, but he's definitely second. He's definitely my second favourite author overall, and he beats George R. R. Martin and other amazing, amazing authors, Brandon Sanderson, for how much I really love this series and just feel like it is perfect in nearly every way. The only slight complaint I had was that book three in the series was a little drawn out in places, Otherwise, it was fantastic, and I gave almost all of them five stars. I gave book three 4.5, but of course I gave this one a five stars as well, because it's just, it's such a good series, and I think if anything can make you connect to it in the way that I have with this, it's doing its job right. The other thing that I just want to mention before I go is that this is a very diverse book. We have all sorts of different people from very different backgrounds, different races, different religions, different sexes, different sexualities, and I think it works incredibly well as an overall story that is convincing because it's like it's the real world. You have lots of different people in the real world, you have lots of different people in this world and I really really like that. And of course the thing about having lots of different characters means that you get lots of different viewpoints and a lot of the time within this we are having our viewpoints questioned by not only one character but two and they will be going back and forth and arguing about a certain topic, a certain theme that is actually something very relevant to today's current world or is something that I find particularly interesting and so I think David Hare handled not only his in-story characters very well but he also tackled some of the topics of the day within his story which was really really cool to see. Another thing that he does exceptionally well is relationships. He has a whole host of different relationships within this. He also is not afraid to talk about pregnancy and periods within this which again I think is fantastic because it's not done very often in fantasy, particularly not by men. And it should be, it's natural, it's part of life. And I really enjoyed that he was happy not only to talk about those topics, but also to explore lots of different types of relationship. We have good relationships and we have bad relationships and we have friendships and we have lovers and we have all sorts of abusive relationships as well. And there are lots of good and bad moments within those relationships that really show you what people can get themselves into and convince themselves is a good thing when maybe it's not. So I really enjoyed all of that. Generally I just want to say that the pacing is exceptional, the characters are exceptional and the actual storyline I really enjoyed 
I personally could not think of a series that does it better than this in terms of how many characters are involved because although I love Robin Hobb's series she doesn't have that many characters except in the live ship books. Most of the Farsia books are just focused on Fitz and the Fool and have a few other characters. This is a multiple POV spread out across two continents and it does feel like a fully developed world with lots of different characters getting involved. The only comparison I could give you would be Game of Thrones, but I don't want to compare it to Game of Thrones because they are different, they're not the same, and this isn't like medieval knights, but I just think it's absolutely a fantastic series, and if you like fantasy and you like epic fantasy, then this is a series you should 100% check out because, I mean, what more can I say? I loved it, it was fantastic, and I gave it a massive 5 out of 5 stars, and I gave all the other books very high ratings as well. Definitely leave me your comments down below if you guys have read this series. I know that the fourth book only recently came out, like the end of last year, so I don't know how many people will have read it, but do leave me your thoughts whenever you get to it, or if you're really excited to read it, then also leave that down below, because I hope you are. I really want more people to read this, because I don't really know many who have, and it's an exceptionally undervalued, underhyped, really fantastic series. So... That is all I have to say today. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the 